Good morning, good morning, Impact family. How are you doing? Happy Sunday. I am so glad that you're here for another service with us online. Listen, we have another amazing word of God for you. We are talking about love, love, and how God remixed love. We've experienced love like never before, but we enter into the presence of God. So this month, we're talking about loving God, loving ourselves, and loving others. And so we're so excited for you to join us. So get ready, get your cereal, get your milk. I don't even know what you drink in the morning, but just get ready, sit down, tune in, because it's going to be an amazing word. Let's get it. Go Icons. Woo! Icons. Today we are remixing something Jamie loves. The color pink. Nope. Uh, sweet tea. Nope, think about it. What do you really love? <gasps> Words of affirmation. Smart guess, but no. Oh, then what is it? Hang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie, and I've run out of things that I love. There's one thing that you forgot, Jamie. Uh. Text me! <gasps> Wait a second. You guys aren't gonna ruin Chex Mix for me, are you? Don't take that away from me. I'm sure we're only gonna make it better. A remix takes something that's known and redefines it. That's what Jesus did with the way that we love others. He remixed the idea and turned it into something new. Are you, are you gonna eat the whole bag? Oh, try and stop me. <laughs> love is a word that can mean a lot of different things. It can mean a feeling or when you really like something. You might say you love cupcakes or your cat. You hear it in pop songs or on a card from your grandma. Love is like a collage with so many different meanings. So when Jesus calls us, his followers, to love God and love others, which type of love is he talking about? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. Love is not proud, love is not rude, love does not seek itself the most. Love is not easily angered, love keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love always protects, love always trusts, love always hopes. In front of you, Jamie, is the thing that you love. Yes. And in these bowls is Chex Remix. Yeah, okay, seriously, are you guys gonna ruin Chex Mix for me? No, Jamie, that's not the intent here. The goal okay. is to see if these remix versions can uh -huh. be better. Oh, okay. Well, let's go to try that. Remix. Bowl number one. Oh, oh. Ooh, this looks pretty good, actually. Whoa. So this is. I'm trying to make sure I get like all these in wow, here. Wow, there's so many things in here. Ooh. So this is this is dried broccoli right here. Ah, oh, well, okay, well, I don't oh, know what wow. I was expecting. It tastes like dried broccoli. You are the uh, you're the Chex Mix expert. How do you how do you properly eat? Oh my like goodness. a whole Well, okay. <laughs> I eat the Chex first, and then the pretzels, and then if there's nuts in there except peanuts, it's not my <laughs> favorite. I prefer pecans, but that's how I eat it typically. It has like freeze dried broccoli. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of excellent. It's some kind of legume. It's like a healthy version. So this is called healthy mix. It's I like it. It's Chex mix, but with apple chips, edamame, and dried broccoli. Healthiness on the go. Oftentimes I'm like, broccoli's not crunchy enough. You want to go to the next one? Yeah. Round two. Ooh, looks great. Heck yes. Mmm. All right. Looks good to me. I think I'm identifying some notes of cotton candy and, 
Oh. Mm. Oh. I'm detecting something I don't recognize. It's very sweet. I like the cotton candy. I mean, of course, I like the checks. This looks like beef jerky, but it doesn't taste like beef jerky. Is it like, I mean, more fruit strippy things? Apricot? Oh. It's called Sticky Mix. It's very sticky. Oh. For cotton candy. Oh. Honey and mm. fruit leather. I like it. I think I like the other one better, though. Is that weird? It is. Have you ever felt stressed and overwhelmed? Have you ever felt stretched thin like you were juggling too many balls and you had nothing to offer? I've been there. One summer I was working with a missions organization and while Jesus showed up in so many cool ways, I can't lie, I was really overwhelmed. I was working really long hours of manual labor, not getting enough sleep, and surrounded by some people who weren't so kind. <laughs> I lost my sense of purpose and my sense of direction. I wasn't just pouring from an empty cup, I was pouring from a dry cup. But the Lord sent me a blessing. At the time, I had a mentor who drove 30 minutes out of her way, who lugged around a baby, who brought me food, even though I had nothing to give her back. She still went out of her way unselfishly to love me and to pour into me. Because of her, I was able to finish out my summer strong, complete the work that God had called me to, and to show Christ's love to those who didn't love me back. I can only describe it as a way of love that can only come through Christ. Agape love. Agape love is not concerned with the self, but rather agape love is this kind of unselfish love. It is unconcerned with the self and more concerned with others. No matter the response, it keeps on loving. It's never changing. I'm reminded of John 4 and the woman at the well. Jesus went out of his way to talk to a woman that he wasn't supposed to. There were so many reasons why. She was known to be a sinner and she was from a rival country that the Israelites did not like at the time. But Jesus didn't care. She had nothing to offer him back except for something he could get himself, which was water. But instead, he loved her. He showed her a love she had never seen before and because of that, she went and told everybody she knew. And that's exactly what Jesus did for you and me on the cross. 1 Corinthians 13 says that love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy and it does not boast. Friends, Jesus' love is different. It's the remix. Hi, I'm Noah. And this is my segment called Nuggets with Noah. We're digging up some good nuggets. Not nuggets of gold, but nuggets of knowledge and chicken nuggets, obviously. If people are being rude, how do you deal with it? Me personally, I don't get physical. I use my words. I have heard that the tongue is sharper than the sword. I mean, they're not sharper than teeth because, you know, you can't just chew chicken nuggets with your tongue. Someone hurt my feelings, what should I do? If they got angry and hurt your feelings, you should wait for them to calm down and later have a conversation, maybe over a plate of nuggets, and just talk to them about it and eat nuggets, okay? What's the best way to share your chicken nuggets? I say that the best way to share your chicken nuggets is to invite all your friends for movie night and instead of making popcorn, you just make a big bucket of chicken nuggets and everyone will be happy. Yeah, so far, these have been surprisingly good. I agree. Very yeah. good. Now, as the resident Chex Mix expert, yeah. how, how have they measured up? I really did like the first one. I don't mind broccoli and I really liked the, what were those green things called? Um, edamame. Oh, edamame, yes. I really, really liked it. I mean, okay, I prefer the traditional, but that's a very good substitute. Like if I was going on a hike and I need some hiking Chex Mix, I would totally pack that. Well, let's share our final oh. Chex Mix remix. Okay, well, they've all been decent so far, so I'm scared this one's gonna be really bad. Well, maybe they saved the best for last. Let's take a look. Ooh! <laughs> 
Um, oh, oh, oh. This also looks excellent. Heck yes. Ah. Ah, wait. Oh, yeah. That's uh, nice. That's not good. What is it? I got a look. Jamie, I think I think this is a, I think this is a, a protein mix. Oh. Yeah. That doesn't taste very good. It's not great. What is that? What? Chicken? What? Huh. It tastes like spicy? Is this meat? Meat mix! Meat mix? Fruit dry chicken. Ew! Dry bacon and dry beef. My Ew. God. It is like biting into an old leather bag. Yeah. And then chewing on it. Have you ever heard of a really bad remix? You just completely lose any semblance of what was good about the original. Remix. That's what this is. Don't smell this. Whatever you do, it smells so bad. Can you let this sink in for just a moment? What are we to be? We're to get rid of anger and slander and malice, and instead we should be kind and compassionate and forgiving. Question, where can you be kind, compassionate, and forgiving? And the answer is, you actually have to be up close. It's almost impossible to be way far off and be kind. I'm being kind to you over there. I'm having compassion for you. I feel for you. I really, really do. I forgive you, but I don't want to be close to you. You actually have to be close in proximity. One of the challenges I see with the church at large today is it's really easy to shout truth from a distance. And here's where you're wrong, and here's where I'm right, and I wanna make a difference. It's easy to shout truth from a distance, but it takes time to love up close. It's incredibly ineffective to shout and to be angry from a distance. It's incredibly effective to be slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to become angry, to get into someone else's world, to understand their hurts, to understand their fears, to have compassion for a different way of thinking instead of trying to be right all the time and forfeiting God's call to be loving? Are we not better than that? Get close. Listen. When's the last time you just listened to someone who's incredibly different from you and love them even though they're incredibly different from you? Be kind and compassionate. It's easy to hurl truth from a distance. It takes time, it takes work, it takes effort to love somebody up close. So if we say that we love God, right? but then we go and treat the people around us poorly, that's actually not the remix. At that point, we're living by an outdated set of rules and we're completely missing the point. So how do we love others well? Well, to love others well, we have to get close. And I completely get it. It can require a ton of effort to love somebody close. But that's exactly what Jesus did. He got close. He embraced us with his love, and he embraced us with his kindness. So go ahead and try this exercise with me. Put your name in the passage and anywhere that it says love, anywhere, swap out your name and ask yourself, does this describe me? You see, as followers of Jesus, every single day we are becoming love. So we can ask ourselves, am I patient with the people that try my patience? Am I kind to everyone, including my enemies? And do I care about other people's needs more than I care about my own? This is the remix. When someone annoys us, we don't give up on them. We love them. When someone is rude to us, we respond with kindness. We love others, not for the award, but because Jesus showed us how, with his words and his actions. Loving others like Jesus changes everything. There's nothing else like it. It's the love remix the world needs. All right, so I ended up really loving the sticky mix. It's sweet and savory, and I kind of can't stop eating it. I really like the healthy Chex Mix. I really kind of like the freeze-dried freeze broccoli. 
and the edamame is really good too. Now, that would be a really great way to get me to eat my vegetables. Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments how you think that we could remix Chex Mix in other mm. ways. Or maybe next time we could remix something that you love. Ooh, that popcorn. Yeah. Ooh, actually, we actually already did that. We uh, oh. added quite a few interesting things to popcorn. Yeah, we did, you're right. Love got a remix when Jesus came to earth. He became love in the flesh. He showed us how to love others in a new way. As a follower of Jesus, how are you becoming love? What are you doing to show the love remix to the people around you? It won't always be easy, but as you love others selflessly, don't forget to... Enjoy, enjoy the ride! ride. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about loving people because that's kind of a big part of who we are as Christians, right? We're loving people. So Jesus says it's not quite enough just to love the people that you like. Anybody can kind of do that. The hard part is loving people that you don't like, or maybe loving people that don't like you. So I have two challenges for you this week, and they're hard because this takes practice. So the first one is ask yourself, how can I show more love to the people in my life, my friends, my family? How can I go that extra mile? And then the second one is how can I show more kindness, more compassion, more love to the people that make it hard? Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you're with us in everything. God, I thank you that you are a loving God and that you can help us to love people better. So this week, help us to go just that extra step in how we love our friends and our families and those people that are just more challenging. In your name we pray, amen. And don't keep this to yourself. Tell stories about how you went that extra mile. Hold your friends accountable. It's easier if you do it together. Welcome back, Impact Icons. Listen, I really hope you enjoyed that word today. Listen, God's love is like no other love we've ever experienced before. You may say you love cupcakes. You may say you love ice cream. You may say you love video games. Whatever you think you love, God loves you so much more. It's like unexplainable. And so I really hope you just take the time to be in the presence of God, experience his love like never before, so that we can continue to grow and then go out and give that love to other people because that's what it's all about. Share the love of God so that they can experience his love like never before. Well, Impact I Kids, uh, listen, I'm gonna pray, but then I hope you come back here next weekend. No, I don't hope, I know you'll be back here next weekend because listen, we have another amazing word for you. So let's pray and then I'll see you next week. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this week, God. We thank you for your love. It's so unconditional. Uh, you love us no matter what, God. And you love us so much that you want us to be in your presence, worshiping you, loving you, because in your presence, all things happen. In your presence, we feel peace, joy. In your presence, things begin to change and shift. So Lord, I pray that we continue to rest in your presence be in your love so we can go out and impact the world for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'll see you next week. You know what I'm about to say. You know what I'm about to say. Go, I kids. Woo! I kids.